Today, I'm going to show you how you can manually emulate film look with an easy step-by-step -step tutorial without any kind of LUTs, and how to approach color grading no matter if you're working with 16-bit, 10-bit or 8-bit footage. In this tutorial, I'm going to work in DaVinci Resolve, but you can apply the techniques I'll be showing you in Premiere Pro, Final Cut or pretty much any other software. So let's get into it. As you can see, I have a couple clips from my last video called Sony Film Simulations. I'll put a link in the upper right corner if you want to watch it. This is my most popular video. So I thought I'm going to show you what is most important when color grading and why 8-bit footage will be enough for most people. I like to manually grade my footage so I won't be using any color space transform or LUTs. In DaVinci Resolve, go to the color page by clicking on it or by pressing the hotkey Shift 6 to travel directly to that page. Select the desired clip and press the hotkey Alt S. This will create additional nodes. Nodes are just like, let's say, layers in Photoshop. I usually rename the nodes so I know exactly what I'm working with and what modifications I have brought to each node. Renaming nodes has no hotkey by default in DaVinci Resolve, so I have assigned this function to the combination Shift R. I'll just name all nodes. Usually, I have between 2 to 6 nodes for fairly simple color grades. First one is temperature, even though, first of all, I like to work on exposure and contrast node. Because I noticed that applying temperature adjustments to the second node will give you a worse color rendition than applying it to the first one. The first one will be temperature, second one will be basic correction, which is contrast and exposure, uh, third will be saturation, fourth will be color grade, fifth will be retolation, and the final one, the sixth one, will be the film grain. You can download the note tree from my website to save a little bit of time and work together with me in this tutorial. Link in the description down below. So even though the first node is the temperature one, the first thing I like to work on is the contrast and exposure. Because it's important to see exactly what you're working with before everything else. In the second node, go to the custom curve panel and in the top right corner, press the three dots. At the bottom of the list, you will find the editable splines option. Let's activate it. Now, let's create the curve. Film, in general, is known to have softer gradations between tones with soft clipping shadows and highlights, creating a very moody atmosphere and that's exactly what we're going to do. Usually, I like to start by doing an S-curve. The idea is to make the image look soft, so be gentle with the curve splines. So you can understand exactly what we're doing here. The more you lift the spline, the brighter the image. The more you lower it, the more details will be hidden in the shadows. So basically, you have to decide which area of the image you want to show and which you don't. Practice, and in time you will develop a feeling to where to set the black and the white point. Okay, next, adjust the soft recovery of shadows and highlights to recover details and for a softer film look. I usually like to bring the shadows up to around 40 and the highlights to 50 or even higher. Contrast is the base of color grading, remember this. So before color, there is contrast. That's also a reason why light is king in cinematography and a scene that is well lit will have more dimension, will be more immersive and overall will just look better. That's why contrast in color grading is very important and is the first step in my workflow. Now that we corrected exposure and the contrast, we can start with the color grading. You know? The whole point of color is to give you a certain feeling, a mood, an atmosphere. From here, you need to analyze the whole image and assess what direction you want to go. How do you want the audience to feel like? Does it work with the whole ambience of the clip? Let's say we can make a super basic teal and orange kind of look, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Go to Hue vs Hue and start looking at the colors present in the scene. We're trying to simplify the full range of colors to only two main ones. So we will shift and drag hues to balance out colors. First step, shift red towards orange and yellow towards red to make it look even. This way, you already made the warm tones look like a single color with more creamy transitions. And the work is 50% done. Ok cool, so now let's fix the other part. Let's go to the cold tones and let's shift cyan towards blue. Blue towards cyan and magenta towards blue. Of course, you have to be careful and pixel P to make sure the colors are not falling apart. 
I've seen red cinema camera 16-bit raw footage falling apart and clearly it wasn't because the lack of information in the footage, it was just bad color grading. Everything I create for YouTube is 8-bit, which only proves further my point, which is that most people don't need better cameras, they only need to learn how to manage color. If you want to find out more about color grading, I have an online course which will help you understand color grading easily and in a short period of time. It's a group class which I'll be holding next month. In this course, I will guide you in the process of color grading your own footage and explain different techniques that will make the whole process easier to grasp. All the lots will be provided at the end of the course for free. So go check it out, link in the description and hurry up, there are limited seats available. So back to the color grading tutorial. Let's zoom in and check if everything is okay in the color transitions. So far, your footage should be okay. We haven't used any extreme adjustments just yet. So most 8-bit footage should look just fine. If you have 10-bit or 16-bit, even better. If not, then maybe you have pushed the slider too far or made too many splines on the color wave. Try reducing them to as few as possible and make subtle adjustments between colors. Last step, maybe add a little bit of teal in the shadows. And that's it. This is a super simple way of getting the teal and orange look without using the qualifier. Why use the qualifier if you don't need it? In most cases, it will only create more complications and I'll talk more about this in the online course. So. Now that I've shown you how to make a teal and orange film look, let me explain why it doesn't fold well on this certain clip. Color grading is a language and needs motivation, which means there must be a reason why I've chosen specific colors. It needs to be in direct relation between the model, the location, the message or the purpose of the video. Putting a teal and orange lot on every video that you create for your client might look nice but will have less effect on the audience because it's not empowering the message of the clip. So what I suggest you to do is first analyze the whole image, scrub through the video a couple times or watch the whole video montage that you plan on color grading just to get a feel of it. Look at the model, the surroundings, the weather conditions, everything is like a piece of a puzzle that should fit nicely together. In this clip, the model is alone between some old ugly blocks with an overcast sky. It gives me a lonely, nostalgic feeling, and I definitely want the colors to represent that. So let's start with a clean plate. Reset each node, and I will start by going in the temperature node and changing the tint hue towards green, making it look more ghetto or dirty in a way. Not necessarily trying to make it look welcoming, you know? And let's apply the techniques I showed you earlier for the teal and orange look. I'm going to work towards a trichromatic color scheme for this image and colors and the colors will be green, orange and blue. So first step, let's correct skin tones because they look too green right now. So I'm going to shift yellow towards red and red towards orange to even them out. Next step, shift magentas towards blue and that's it. Let's exaggerate the saturation level to see if any flaws have been made. For example, if any colors are falling apart or if I shifted too much any of the colors. Then back down the saturation to the desired level and let's move on to the halation and film grain. DaVinci Resolve has a halation plugin by default and I'll show you my settings. Personally, I'm a halation junkie, so I usually like it to bleed a lot through the image. If you like it more subtle, try the second settings and adjust the second glow slider accordingly. Last step is film grain. I played a lot with these adjustments and I think I found the perfect film grain settings which I'll be sharing with you. Let's check the before and after. I think it looks great. This is exactly how I edited my shots for the Sony film simulation video. Don't forget to check that out. The colors are blending perfectly with the mood and the intention of the clip. This is the easiest workflow for color grading, film emulation or any kind of look really. So if this works with 8-bit footage, believe me, it will definitely work with any kind of footage. So hit the like button, subscribe for more color grading tutorials, and don't forget about the online course that is coming. Sign up to save your spot. Till next time.
Take care and have fun. See ya.